I'm a super judge and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Are you ready? Now, now with all I've been teaching you, you should be bold now to, to demand for your daily bread. Praise God. Are you ready? Say this with me. Say, Father, today I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, we bless you for today's broadcast. Thank you because every body is being lifted right now. Yokes are being destroyed by the power of your spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, I was explaining to you yesterday, Jesus is our high priest. And after whose order? The order of Melchizedek. Listen to me. Every child of God who is not operating under this priesthood, his walk with God is faulty. Believe me. Because there is no other priesthood that exists today but that. And then he didn't sublet his priesthood to anybody. The Bible says he continues forever. There is no change of this priesthood. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me let me let me read. Ah, can, can we just speed read? And, and, and you understand. Look at chapter 8 of Hebrews. Look at chapter 8 of Hebrews. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, from verse 1. I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 10 or 11, 12. Or, let's read the whole chapter then. 13 verses. Now watch. Now, of the things which we have spoken. This is the sum of all this explanation. He was explaining, said, this is the total. This is the sum. What is the sum? We have such an high priest who is set in the right hand of the throne of majesty in heaven, a minister of the sanctuary. Did you see that? He is a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle. So there is this true sanctuary. There is the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. Watch this now. Now, he's a high priest though, of the true tabernacle. Then he says, verse 3, for every high priest is ordained, did you see that, to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. Follow me now. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that according, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, said he, that thou make all things according to the pattern should should to thee in the mount. But now had he obtained a more excellent ministry. Who? Jesus. Obtained a more excellent ministry. By how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if the first covenant had been faultless, there should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, now watch this. Watch this now. So he says he found fault with them, the people of the old covenant, and the old covenant itself. He says, finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Are you following now? Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant and regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant 
that I will make. Now he was speaking, he was repeating the prophecy he made by the prophet Jeremiah. He was, now he says, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. For those, after those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws in their, into their minds and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. Follow now. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and everyone his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities I will remember no more. Now verse 13 says, In that he said a new covenant, he had made the first old. Now that which decayed and waxed old is already is ready to vanish away. Did you get that? Now he's, he said all this priesthood thing was going on. And God looks at it because he saw the, the disadvantage. He saw the people couldn't even keep it. So he said, hmm, I'm going to do something new. I'm going to establish a new covenant. And when I establish that, I'm going to write my laws in their hearts. Now, what does that mean in essence? This is buttressed in what jo John said in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 27 and 28. He said, the spirit that is in us teaches us all things. And you don't need that any man should teach you. But as the Holy Spirit teaches you of all things and it's true, you should abide in him. Now, he was telling us that, hey, God said it in prophecy that he will put his laws in our hearts and in our mind. Now, how did he put his laws in our mind? He didn't carry the Bible and the scriptures and put it on. He gave us the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit dwelling in us today is the one that instructs us and tells us which way we should go. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, we've got the Holy Spirit in us. And then we've got the high priest who is Jesus. He wasn't abolishing the priesthood. He was changing the pattern of the priesthood. What did he change it to? He changed it to that of Melchizedek. You see? Now, in the pattern of the Aaronic priesthood, the Levitical priesthood, even in that pattern, they, they were given instructions to tithe. And God says, according to that instruction, they will be blessed. Now, when there was a change of the priesthood, the patterns changed. Now, he didn't cancel the patterns. The patterns just changed onto a more perfect pattern. I want you to follow me now. Now, what is this more perfect pattern? Is what I described to you. Melchizedek did with Abraham. Number one, he blessed him. Number two, he received his tithe. Number three, he instructed him concerning the tithe. Then he also instructed him concerning the blessing. How to move on earth concerning the blessing. See that? Now, today, that is the role Jesus plays in our life. You, you remember when Jesus met that rich young ruler. And then the man said, oh, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, you know the law, keep it. He said, I've kept it from my youth. And Jesus said, the Bible said, he behold him and loved him. And then he said something to him. Go sell everything you have, give to the poor. Come follow me. Now, many times we dwell on the go sell everything you have, give to the poor. We forget that Jesus said, come follow me. Why did Jesus say, come follow me? You see, we imagine that the man will just go sell everything, you know, and start giving out anybody he sees. Are you poor? Okay, come and take one million naira. You, I've sold my property, I've sold my land. Oh yeah, you take this. You think that's what he was going to do? No, Jesus would have instructed him. See, Jesus just told him that and watched him to see if he would agree. If he had agreed, it is Jesus that would have, because all Jesus wanted to do for that man was to so bless him. I'm telling you the truth. Jesus was not intimidated by his wealth. Neither does Jesus like poor people serving him or working with him. No, sir. But Jesus looked at this man. Now remember, the man said, I want to receive eternal life. And Jesus said, you're sure you want to receive eternal life? I said, yeah. The only way to receive eternal life is come follow me. But everything you have now will be a distraction. So he says, go 
sell everything you have. Now, you know, the Lord told me this. I was fellowshipping with him one time. I said, but Lord, because with, what I, with the understanding I have, you know, and I was fellowshipping with him. I said, but would you have just let this guy go sell everything? He said, no. I was only looking for him to give a nod that he is willing to do it. Then I would have instructed him like I instructed Abraham. See, Now, when, when, when Abraham gave the tithes to Melchizedek, what do you think? Think Melchizedek gathered the tithes and took them to heaven? No. Melchizedek didn't take anything. The only thing Melchizedek did was to sit down and eat with Abraham. And guess what? Even what they ate was what he brought. But now you will find Abraham telling the king of Sodom in, in that Genesis chapter 14. And he told him, say, hey, I have sworn before the Lord Most High that I will not take even a shoelace from you. But he says, only that which the servants have taken and the portion for this king and that king and that king. Now, what do you think happened there? That was what Melchizedek commanded Abraham to do with the tithes. He told him, look, Abraham, now this portion, you give it to your servants. And this portion, now you see, that's the difference between Abraham and Elijah. Sorry, Elisha. You remember when Naaman came back to give thanks. You know, he brought some goods. And Elisha said, nah, keep it. I don't, I'm not interested in all those things. But he had a servant who doesn't walk by faith like him. And he told the guy, go away. And Gehazi thought about it and said, huh? Just like that? Nah. He went after him and said, sir, something just came up. My guy said, I should come and tell you that. He needs some of those things you wanted to give him first. And he gave it. You know what, what, what happened to him? He became leprous because his master cursed him. And now, they see the difference between Abraham and Elisha. Now, Abraham gave Melchizedek the tithe. And Melchizedek told him, see, they, they just came from war. Of course, the servants were expecting to get some goods. And Melchizedek told him, say, hey, keep this portion. It's for your servants. Let them take it. Let them enjoy it. And leave this portion for those kings that have helped you. They are your neighbors. Give it to them. That's what Abraham did with the tithe of all that he gave to Melchizedek. Melchizedek didn't take it to him. See? So, the same thing today, when we tithe in Jesus, we bring that tithe before him and we say, Lord, you are my high priest. You must recognize him as your high priest because he's only the one who has been ordained to receive tithes from you. If you don't tithe, you are not recognizing him as a high priest. You don't come to him with mere words. You show, the Bible says, faith without works is dead. Now, this is your works that show that you've got faith in his priesthood ministry. You've got to bring something for him to offer. So you come before him and say, Lord Jesus, I recognize you as my high priest. And your priesthood is after the order of Melchizedek. And through whom Titan, instruction for Titan came. So I bring my tithes to you now. Thank you, Lord. And I expect you to tell me what to do with it. And how to walk on the earth that I may be blessed. And he would begin to instruct you where the tithe is concerned. He will tell you, give it to so and so. Give this portion to so and so. Give that portion to so and so. Now you obey him. He will now tell you, hey, from henceforth, this is all maru pragesha barakashe. See, this is why I can never be broke. I'm telling you, I can never be broke. Never. It's impossible. Why? Because he begins to instruct you. He will tell you what to do with your salary if you are working and earning a salary. He will tell you, ah, tell you. He will tell you, huh? Because he, he will begin to instruct you how to prosper. It is from him. No man can teach you that. That's what we read here. He says, 
I'll put my laws in their mind and in their hearts. And no one will say to his neighbor, know the Lord. Everybody will just wake up and know what to do. And, and be, with that, we'll begin to bring the blessing all over the world. Praise God. Walking in that priesthood who, who is concerned about the whole world because he, as a priest, is also making intercession for us. Now, what's the point making intercession for someone you cannot instruct? Because when you intercede, wisdom will come for you and then you begin to instruct the person. Praise God. Our time is up. Praise God. Listen, don't miss tomorrow's broadcast. God bless you. Bye-bye.